Today we're going to do a quick video about getting started in USPSA competitive shooting and kind of my experience so far, uh, don't do what I did, and some other pointers, things like that. Um, so to get started, I started shooting in USPSA about six months ago, so it was by I think February 2016 is when I got started. Um, I started by buying everything first. Uh, that was mistake number one. I'm going to come back to that, but that's the biggest mistake that I made and that I've heard of other people making. Uh, so I'm going to try to help you look at avoiding that if you're looking at getting started in competitive shooting. Um, lesson number one in my experience so far, show up and have fun. Um, Every match I've been to so far, all local ones, but a couple different clubs, everyone's very welcoming, um, making sure you're safe, making sure you're having fun, answering any questions you have, giving you pointers. Um, I've competed in other sports throughout the years, and my experience so far in USPSA has been one of the best as a beginner, um, getting started and learning the ropes quickly and having a good time. Um, so... Really the, the biggest mistake, like I said, I bought everything first. I, I read the rule book and thought I understood it. Um, you can get your rule book online or you can just look at the PDF online. When you join, you'll get a hard copy mailed to you. Um, but reading the rule book, I thought I understood it. I thought I understood the scoring and the divisions and everything. And I decided I wanted to shoot in uh, what's called limited and limited 10 class in New York State we're always limited to 10 rounds in the magazine, um, so we have limited 10 as the option. Uh, limited is really a misnamed division in my experience or opinion, really. Um, the guns are just one step below a full open race gun. Um, pretty much the only thing you can't do to them is optics, barrel porting, and compensators. Pretty much everything else is fair game. Your trigger work, your magazines, your mag wells, every, you can do anything and everything to the gun except optics, barrel porting, or compensators. Everything else for a game. Um, I like the idea of raced out competition guns. It's cool. I like tinkering. I like fixing them. I like upgrading. It's fun. Um, so I'm also a big Smith & Wesson fan. Uh, so I figured I'm going to get the m and Pro uh, Long in nine millimeter, uh, which I did, and started buying the parts to make it a limited gun, uh, or limited 10 gun. And after my first match or two and making some friends at the local matches, they said, why are you shooting nine millimeter in limited 10? And I said, well, why not? What does it matter? I'm shooting minor scoring, um, no big deal. And that was the big thing, minor scoring versus major scoring. In uh, in USPSA, there's two types of scoring, minor and major. Major typically has to be 40 caliber or higher, and then minor is typically 9 millimeter. Um, if we want to get really specific, a .355 caliber bullet, and then major standard has to be .40 or larger caliber. Within that, there's something called power factor, which is a quick formula of bullet weight in grains, times the velocity in feet per second uh, divided by a thousand. Minor you have to have a minimum of 125 power factor and major minimum of 165 power factor for those scoring. Major scoring it's basically um, A's score 5, B's score 3 I think. It's all in the rule book but if you don't get A's you end up with more points scoring major than minor. Um, so I was competing against other people who, even if we all had the same hits, a mix of A's, B's, C's, and D's, and they were all the same, they would win um, just because they were scoring major versus minor. So I basically set myself up uh, for a handicap from the very beginning. Um, so through the advice of people I was talking to, they said, well, just take your M&P you have and take all the parts off of it. Um, you can still do trigger internal work in production division and um, just shoot in production. So that's what I've been doing for the past three matches now. Um, 
So production division is basically off-the-shelf pistols. Some are purpose-built like the Smith & Wesson M&P Pro Series. Um, but even those you can still tune a little bit, the internals, the springs, polishing components, just to get the best trigger you can get. Um, you can also use certain base pads um, that are a little thicker uh, from several different companies. And that's pretty much all you can do to your gun. You can stipple or add grip tape to just the grip area. Um, you could paint your gun if you just wanted it to look different. But performance wise, only able to do internal modifications and some within spec base pads. So switched over to that production division, everyone has scored minor no matter what uh, caliber you're shooting. Um, so that levels the playing field. And also everyone is limited to 10 rounds um, all over the country, not just in New York State or other limited. So production division is really that entry level, easiest to get into, typically least expensive to get into, and most level playing field to get started shooting. Um, so I've really been enjoying that for, like I said, the past three or four matches, I think, and it's been going great. Um, as soon as I switched over to production division, I jumped up in my scoring, I jumped up in my placing, um, also getting better at shooting, but the, the scoring was really hurting me in limited 10. Um, so I had to sell all the, well, I didn't have to, but I decided to sell all the other parts that I had built the gun with, which allowed me to get some more magazines, um, base pads, and ju just have my production uh, rig completely set up and ready to go. Um, so yeah, here's my production rig. Competition belt, uh, blade tech holster with a drop and offset, which is legal for production division. Bunch of magazines with Springer Precision base pads on them, and a uh, double layer belt. This is a inexpensive Uncle Mike's $25 on Amazon. Um, you can get belts three times as expensive, but so far, doing this on the less expensive side of things, this has served me well. Um, these are Safari Land magazine holders. I forget what model, but again, less expensive and they do the job well. So that being said, I'm still planning on building a new race gun uh, in the open division. Um, so I've been talking to people about doing that and um, that will be scored major. Uh, probably doing nine millimeter major. In open division, you can shoot nine millimeter or uh, 0.355 diameter bullets, uh, but you basically are overpowering them uh, with more powder. So. Don't do that unless you really know what you're doing or asking a lot of questions. Production, always load to spec or use factory ammo. That's the smart thing to do. Um, so getting started. I just went through a lot of my mistake and uh, uh, my gear right here. But if you're looking at getting started, the number one thing that I would do differently is obviously not buy everything straight up except maybe just show up with my M&P and my basic belt because it was already inexpensive and um, just learn from there. If you don't want to go buy a new gun right away and you already do have a pistol of sorts, uh, be it a Glock or an M&P, a SIG, you know, whatever your basic service pistol, defense pistol you have, show up with that, show up with some mag holsters, at least three magazines are going to be... Uh, that's going to be your bare minimum. Most people go, especially in production, five or six or more on hand. Um, show up and just shoot. They'll help. They'll help you get set up. Um, most clubs register on PracticeScore.com now, um, so you can call the uh, uh, match promoter or organizer and say you're new, and they'll they'll help you out. Don't have to buy anything new unless you want to but definitely understand the rules before spending hundreds of dollars on your equipment or more. Um, it's a game that can be as expensive as you want it to be or as inexpensive as you can, and even the inexpensive side is still expensive. <laughs> so don't buy your gear before you shoot unless you definitely know the rules. Um, I would only do that if I had a friend that had already had a bunch of shooting experience and could tell me exactly what to do. If you're going in by yourself, show up, have fun, ask a lot of questions. Everyone will be there to help out. Um, all you'll need is 
your gun, magazines, safety glasses, earplugs, you're good to go. And obviously ammo. Um, so check out the USPSA website. It's USPSA.org. Uh, membership is relatively inexpensive. You'll get your rule book. You get some stickers and patches. Um, you get access to the different forms on the websites. Look at different forms. Go to the matches. Ask questions. Um, I've been having a blast so far. And that's really it for today. Um, if you have any other questions, you can comment below or email me directly at 2agunsmithingandfirearms at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.